Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is Mr. Sunshine, motorcycle technician Eddie, coming to you live right here in a hot, humid, sunny South Florida day. And as we've been uh, uh, trying to diagnose the issue, I, we have solved it. That's right. Mr. Sunshine has solved the issues here on this heritage, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it as to what we had to do today. Uh, there's a lot going on on these older Harleys. There's sensors there. There's a lot of wiring, a lot of connectors underneath the seats. And you have your uh, ECU, electronic control box under there, along with a lot of wiring and fuses and relays. Uh, crank sensor. And what the issue with, with the bike was when it was heating up after it would be driving for half hour, 45 minutes, uh, and it's really hot, the engine would just shut off. Uh, then you'd have to wait a few minutes, it would restart, you would go, and then it would die again. Well, one of the first things to do is to check the positive and the negative connectors to make sure everything's nice and tight so there's a good ground, and your crank sensor. Uh, last week, we replaced the crank sensor right down there. Uh, it ran, everything was operating according to plan. And then uh, after they took it back out for a ride, it sh I did the same thing and shut down altogether. Had to wait a while. Once it got cooled off, it restarted and it continued until it died again. Uh, just it, it was an electrical issue, not uh, or compounded by a fuel issue. So what we're going to do here, we're going to show you exactly how to determine how to determine to check your sensors and your faults on the bike. And I'm gonna show you that here in just a moment. I had to put that away. Just get on the bike. All right, on your speedometer, you have your little thing here and you got all your lights and everything. And what you have to do is you have to hold in your odometer. Now, this is gonna be hard because uh, I, I need two hands in order to turn the switch on. First off, turn your switch on right up here. You then hold this in for about five or ten seconds. Once you have it turned, you go ahead, you turn this on to accessory, and there you go. You can see how it turned up the DO1 clear. So the sensor one is clear. You release this, click it again, it now says number two clear. If there was an issue with the, that number two sensor, it would be a code number. Number three, clear. Number four, clear. So right now it's going through all the diagnostics on the bike. Number five, clear. Put this back there, hit it again. Number six, clear. No, up to now, there's no issues, no codes. Number seven, clear. Number eight, clear number nine clear number 10 clear ppp ppu and there would be your pin number that's the pin number that's programmed into this motorcycle and then with the uh remote and the key fob you'd be able to shut it off and it's the alarm system so if you lose if you lose your pin this is what you need to come back to it and get your pin number back. So then you can go through another program, which I'll do a little video later, to show you how to go back through and reset your pin or even to change it. But without your pin number and, and being the bike being so old, you're not gonna see it. So again, number two is clear. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And there you go. So now we'll go ahead and shut this off and we're good. So we knew that all the sensors now on the bike were clear. So there wasn't a problem with that. So we went under the seat, we checked around, I took the key fob, you pop this open, there's a battery in there, I replaced that, it was a, what, CR 2032, put a new one in, even though the new one, the other one was still good. Well, shake it around in there, here is the problem. The Dynojet Power Commander. This was actually sitting down 
up against the battery down there. These are the connectors that connect it. All right, and what you do is you disconnect the one, put the factory one back in, plug it in. I spike started right up, and I've been driving it for less 45 minutes, and it's running like a champ. Now with these power commanders, you're able to hook it up to a computer and then change the parameters of the air fuel mixture, uh, the curve, the temperature and everything. Well, since this is a 2002, we don't know when they put this power commander in here. We don't know if the curves have been changed. If, but when I t oh, turned it on, the two flashing lights, there's two flashing lights right here. One for power and one for status. And those two things were flashing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and as I shook it, then it stayed on power and shook it again. It was moving. So just by disconnecting it, all right, there's no other wires to disconnect because it's a 48 pin connector uh, for what we had to do today for the last half hour, back and forth. And it is running like a champ. It's power up the wazoo. Uh, hasn't hesitated, hasn't backfired, hasn't done anything. So I really do believe I have repaired this problem. Now, by turning the lights on, we reconnected the wiring. We got our lights down here. Here's our lights. I got those reconnected. These are PIA driving lights. These are the lights up here, so everything works. I replaced the fuse. I rewired the PS switch, so that goes off now. So now the driving lights would be off. So we got everything wired, everything back up and running, everything good to go. So there it is, another motorcycle completed, and no more, hopefully, uh, at least for the last 45 minutes, in this 104 degrees, it has not stalled it has not died it is not shut down so i think we eliminated the problem